Okay, I just rearranged the zoom a little bit, so this time it should be better. I mean, I readjusted for this resolution of these projectors and everything. So here's the theorem. It's the same theorem as before. I just opened the statement. Look at this. We have two, uh, two vectors with given by components, x and y. Components respectively, x1, x2, xn, y1, y2, yn. DP metric, that's how we define it. It's just a repetition of a definition. It's a shorter version. That's the expanded version of the sigma symbol. Basically, it's the same thing. It's just two different ways to write it. It's a condensed one, more advanced one. This is more self-explanatory one. D infinity metric, that's the definition of it. So here's my theorem. The theorem was like this. That's, that's, that, that's how the theorem was, the first part of the theorem. We have such a double relation between the matrix D infinity and GP, and we're going to establish that. So, proof of, well, I call this part A, I call this part B. So, A part, first inequality, which we need to prove. Listen to this. Well, first I'm going to take this expression, this expression which represents the GP metric. Here it is, the whole expression. Just repeat it here. And what I'm going to do is this. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm going to vanish every term in this representation except for the first one. It's just my desire to do so. If I do so, obviously because I'm vanishing, because I'm removing the positive terms from the expression, the expression will go smaller, right? Obviously. So if I do that, I put this inequality sign. So my original expression greater or equal. First one I keep. All of the others, it's just zero. And obviously, if you do the arithmetic, it's just the first one with no powers or no roots. So from here, what I can say? I can say that my GP metric for two points, x and y, it, it, it is always greater or equal than the difference between the first two components. Or uh, greater or equal than the difference of first components, I should say. Well, basically nothing stops me from vanishing every component except the second one, and con concluding the similar, similar statement for the difference of second components, and then difference of third components, and all of the other components, right? So basically I can say that Repeating the argument, similarly, I can say that dp metric of x and y is greater or equal than the difference of any other i component where i takes any value 1, 2, and n. So from here, I can say now if my dp metric greater or equal than every individual difference, obviously it will be equal than the max of those difference, these differences. If it's bigger than every individual number, it's bigger than the max of those numbers, right? But the max of those numbers, it's the infinity metric. And that, finish of the, that finishes the proof of this inequality. So you see, as easy as this. The main trick is just we'll be vanishing some components and just end up with this trivial inequality like that. And that's the end of the proof of part A. Now for the part B, Oh, well, maybe still a couple and give you a chance to copy it. <coughs> now, if I want to prove part B, that's exactly what we just discussed with Mary yesterday. That's the part B of this proof. Look at this. Well, just to make it a little shorter, I just decided to introduce the abbreviation. Let me just abbreviate this number with the D infinity, like this. Then, where is my asterisk, I wonder? Ah, here we go. Uh, it says by asterisk, and the asterisk, asterisk marks, marks this. I can say something like this again. Well, it's, all, it's, it, it's an obvious conclusion again, right? Because d infinity is a max of all of these numbers. Obviously, d infinity will be larger than every individual number from where the max is taken. So from that, well, that is true for every i, 1, 2, and n. From that, again, I'm taking the expression for my gp norm, this expression, for gp norm. Here's the expression. And this time, rather than vanishing these individual terms, I will replace them with a larger expression, with the d infinity. 
if I replace them with a large expression, look what happens. This one is replaced with the d infinity to the power p. Next one is replaced d infinity to power p. Every one in its turn will get replaced by the d infinity to the power p, which is as a common factor across the whole sum. We can, we can factor it out. We can factor it out, and that's the expression we come up with. Oh, actually, yeah. This is repeated n times. That's why we have the n factor, which gives me this expression after simplification. That, that is exactly the b side. Look at this. And that finishes the proof of the theorem. It's a very simple proof. I can't, well, if you have, you know, I mean, if you get, if you like challenging problems, Try to see whether you can modify this proof to make part three of the theorem on my main slides. That's a, that's a serious challenge. Not representational challenge, it's a serious, serious mathematical challenge. Oh, yeah. But for the, part, for the part one of that theorem, that's how it is. Now, second one I call the corollary because it, because it follows from the first one. Let's just listen to that. Yeah. I need to scroll it up again. So second one, which I call the corollary, which means it's a consequence of the first part, it says that we have a following relation between the P and Q matrix. If you take P and Q, two different P and Qs, like that, then we have a, when we have such relation, even though I think there's something is missing here. Yes, yeah, something is missing in this representation, uh, because Hmm. Or maybe not. We'll see. We'll see in a second. Should be fine. Here's a proof for the corollary. I start with the. G this is a very simple corollary, as a matter of fact, uh, because we have the first part. It's relatively easy application of the first part. I take the DP, DQ metric. By the first part, I have this relation. It's the B side of the first part. We just proved. And then by the first part again, but now A side of the first part, we have this. We just replace D infinity with D P. And that's 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 all there is to it. We just double application of the first part, B side first, and then A side of my first part of the theorem. Any questions? <coughs> 